Professor Dr. Patrick Verkordian, Chief Executive Officer, Global Center for Adaptation. Dr. Akuimi Adesina, President of the African Development Bank Group. And Dr. Ngozi Okoji Iwela, Director General of the World Trade Organization. Ms. Patricia Esponsoza, Executive Director of the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change. Ladies and gentlemen, I am pleased to join you at this important event on adaptation to climate change. This is an issue of great importance, not only to me and my administration, but also to all our Kenyan people and the entire African continent. I note that this inaugural lecture on adaptation on Africa, and I'm pleased that the first edition is taking place here in Kenya. Ladies and gentlemen, the recently released sixth assessment report of the UN Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change has confirmed that the African continent is the region most exposed to and adversely impacted by climate change. We are together seeing major climate change impacts across our African continent. These include the ongoing drought that has ravaged eastern parts of our country and precipitated famine, as well as the 2020 floods that we saw here in East Africa, which affected over one million people. Additionally, and this is notable, is that the worst locust, locust outbreak in 25 years, which left about one million people food insecure in the Horn of Africa, and the March 2019 cyclone Ida, which affected more than 1.5 million people in Mozambique. Further evidence does indicate that climate change will have a devastating sub-economic impact across the world, but quite severely here in Africa. If we do not take any action, Africa could, as a consequence, see its gross domestic product contract by up to 30% by 2050 due to climate change. While impacts will vary across the region, we anticipate that climate impacts will lead to overall yield reductions of at least 20% by 2050. Increased flooding will raise the risk of malaria, while frequent droughts will put severe stress on our water resources. So ladies and gentlemen, for Africa, a low emitting continent, the main priori priority is adaptation, and it is now an urgent imperative. We need to accelerate action to moderate the negative impacts of climate change, facilitate adjustment to expected climate impacts, and strengthen our capacity to absorb, accommodate, and recover from climate change effects. While it is relatively more difficult to design, implement adaptation projects, and while fewer resources are currently available for adaptation, we should not lose sight of the fact that adaptation is without doubt smart economics. Indications are that for an investment of 800 million US dollars in developing countries in climate adaptation programs, this would see and result in benefits of up to 16 billion US dollars per year. So ladies and gentlemen, let me say that Kenya has deployed significant financial resources to scale up its adaptation efforts. 
We have mainstreamed adaptation into our national development strategy and aligned it to future expected impacts of climate change. Kenya's updated national determined contributions provide a comprehensive overview of adaptation priorities that require international financial support. To implement our nationally determined contributions, we plan to invest approximately 8 billion US dollars over the next 10 years. This is just 10% of the total investment needed of the NDCs, and we therefore need support from our international partners. The financing challenge is not peculiar to Kenya. Globally, funding for climate adaptation, which in 2017 averaged around 30 billion US dollars a year, would need to increase tenfold to meet the growing needs of vulnerable communities in our warming planet. The COVID-19 pandemic, ladies and gentlemen, has exasperated the funding situation. Countries around the world have collectively allocated over 20 trillion US dollars in COVID stimulus packages, thereby reducing greatly the resources available to combat climate change. However, climate cannot wait while we address COVID-19. We must address these two challenges together. Indeed, to make recovery truly sustainable, we need to institute green recovery measures that integrate adaptation and mitigation measures. So today I applaud the Global Center on Adaptation for its publication of a comprehensive report on adaptation in Africa. The State and Trend of Adaptation in Africa 2021 report, which is being launched today. This report has identified adaptation actions and investment opportunities that exist in Africa. These opportunities include climate resilient projects such as mangrove restoration, water storage, drainage rehabilitation, digital agriculture, as well as new innovative financing such as blending, blended financing to de-risk private investment and climate related debt swaps. So ladies and gentlemen, I applaud the leadership of the Global Center on Adap Adaptation and the African Development Bank for developing the African Adaptation Acceleration Program. This program in principle aims to scale up and accelerate adaptation here in Africa by providing financial and technical support to African adaptation efforts. This initiative greatly paves the way for the continent to manage its climate-related challenges. It is important to appreciate that effective climate adaptation will require a paradigm shift that harnesses the full potential of science and innovation. For example, we need to leverage entrepreneurs willing to test and apply new technologies at scale, broaden the range of drought or heat resistant crops and provide real time weather information. To make this paradigm shift, we will lean on our institutions of higher learning. The University of Nairobi here in Kenya is one of a few African universities that offer graduate programs in climate adaptation. It demonstrates the importance that the government of Kenya attaches to the issue of adaptation. And I am hopeful that this session today will also open new opportunities to the University of Nairobi 
and the other forward le learning institutions in our country. In conclusion, ladies and gentlemen, and indeed as you are in no doubt aware, the upcoming COP26 in Glasgow has dedicated sessions on adaptation and financing. We are in this context keen to harness this platform to identify good adaptation practices and to catalyze public as well as private sector funding for adaptation programs in Africa, which can be presented during the upcoming COP26 summit. I thank you all and wish you very fruitful deliberations.